Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Uh, once again, I am not at my home for this recording, so the video quality is a little bit off, but and possibly the audio quality. I hope uh, you still enjoy the video. We've got the card close-up for Lord of the Rings, the card game, base set. We're going to do the Spirit and Lore decks, opposite order though, Lore and Spirit decks, that come with the base set. Uh, for our card close of the day. So I hope you enjoy it. We'll have the tactics and leadership decks coming out next. Uh, so be looking for those. And without anything else, let's get right into the decks. Okay, so starting off, you can see the one unaligned card that comes with the base set. You will get four of these. That way you can put one in each of the decks that comes with the game. Uh, now you've got a cost of five, so he's a pretty expensive card, but he's got a willpower of four. He's got an attack strength of four, defense of four, and he has four health. Uh, the health really isn't going to matter a whole lot because if you look down at his ability, at the end of the round, discard Gandalf from play, so he's only going to be in the game for one round at a time. Also, he has a response after Gandalf enters play. Choose one of the following. Draw three cards, deal four damage to one enemy in play, or reduce your threat by five. So this is a very powerful card. You can also see it's unique, so you can only be out uh, one copy of him at a time. But again, since he leaves play immediately after the round, uh, that's not going to be much of a problem. Now we're going to take a look at the lore deck, we're starting with the heroes. Uh, of course, each deck has three heroes. And you've got Denethor here, who's got a threat value of eight, one willpower, one attack, three defense, and three life. Uh, he's got an action of Exhaust and Thor to look at the top card of the encounter deck. You may move that card to the bottom of the deck. So he will help you get away from some of the more dangerous monsters if you choose to use that action. Next we've got Berivor, a threat value of 10, 2 willpower, 2 attack, 2 defense, and 4 health. Uh, she has an action of Exhaust Berivor to choose a player that that player will draw two cards. Limit this to once per round. And finally, we've got Glorfindel. Uh, 12 threat value, 3 willpower, 3 attack. Only one defense, though, but he does counteract that with 5 health. Action is to pay one resource from Glorfindel's pool to heal one damage to any character, yourself or another player. So that's very useful. Moving on to the ally cards of the Lord deck, we start with Hinamarth River Song. This is going to be a guy with one cost to summon him out. Uh, only one willpower, one attack, and no defense, and only one health. Uh, however, he is a very cheap card, as you can see, and his action is to exhaust to look at the top card of the encounter deck. Uh, you will only have one of these in your uh, base set, and as you can see, he's unique, so even if you get more of them, you can only use one at a time. Then we've got Glaywin. Two cost, one willpower, no attack, and no defense. Uh, he does have two health, and his action is to exhaust to choose a player. That player can then draw one card, and you get two of these with the base set. Then we've got Erebor Hammersmith. He has two cost, one willpower, one attack, one defense, three health. Uh, his response is after you play Erebor Hammersmith, return the topmost attachment in any player's discard pile to his hand. That can be extremely useful with some of the attachments you'll see later on. And you have two of these guys in the base set. Then you've got the Miner of the Iron Hills. Two cost, zero willpower, one attack, one defense, two health. Response, after Miner of the Iron Hills enters play, choose and discard one condition attachment from play. Uh, a lot of times you'll find that there are not a whole lot of conditions to get attached to a player, but in the final uh, quest, there do tend to be a lot, so he can be pretty useful. You get two of them in the base set. And final ally here is going to be Daughter of Nimrodel. Uh, cost of three, one willpower, zero attack, zero defense, one health. Uh, her action, though, is to exhaust to heal up to two damage on any hero, which can be very powerful and very useful, and you get a total of three of them with the base set, which brings your total allies to ten for lore.
Now let's take a look at the attachments that come with Lure. There are seven total attachment cards, which ties for the most. It ties with the Tactics deck. Uh, and you're going to have the Protector of Lorien. This is going to have a one cost. You can attach it to a hero. Uh, and its action is to discard a card from your hand to give attached hero plus one defense or plus one willpower until the end of the phase. You can do this three times per phase. Keep in mind that's three times per phase, not three times per round. And you get two of these in the deck. You have the Dark Knowledge, which is a condition. Cost one, you attach it to a hero, the attached hero gets minus one willpower. Uh, it has a response of exhaust in order to look at one shadow card that was just dealt to an enemy attacking you. You only get one of these in the deck, or in the base set. Then you've got the Forest Snare, cost three. It's an item and a trap. Attached to an enemy engaged with a player. Uh, attached enemy can no longer attack. So basically you can pull an enemy out of the staging area and no longer will uh, add its threat to, uh, to the quest when you're going up for a quest. And it can't attack a player, so it effectively removes that enemy from, from play unless that enemy has some sort of other... Um, power that or, or action that's going to cause you, cause you problems. And you get two far snares with the base deck. And finally, we've got self-preservation, three cost. It's a skill. You attach it to a character, and its action is exhaust in order to heal two points of damage from attached character. Again, you get two of those with the base deck. Now, we're take a look at the events. Now, there are 12 events, which means that the lore deck specializes in events. It has more events than anything else, uh, even though it does have 10 ally cards, so it's pretty close there. This first one, cost of one, is Radagast Cunning. Uh, it has a quest action. Choose an enemy in the staging area until the end of the phase. That enemy does not contribute its threat value. And you have two of these. Then we've got Secret Paths, cost of one, quest action. Choose a location in the staging area until the end of the phase. That location does not contribute its threat. So it's the location version of Radagast Cunning, and you have two of those as well. Then let's look at Lore of Imladris. Two cost. It's got an action of choose a character, heal all damage from that character. And you have three of those, so this is an incredibly powerful and useful card. And we've got Lorien's Wealth. You uh gonna cost of three action. Choose a player. That player draws three cards, two of those. And then we've got Bayorn's Hospitality, cost of five. Action. Choose a player. Heal all damage on each hero controlled by that player. But, of course, you're only going to have one of those because of how powerful it is. And finally, we've got Gandalf's Search. It has a cost of X, and what that means is look at the top X cards of any player's deck. Add one of those cards to its owner's hand and return the rest to the top of the deck in any order. So its uh, cost is going to vary depending on how many cards you want to look at. All right, now let's look at the spirit deck. First hero we've got here is going to have is Eleanor. She's going to have a threat level of seven, willpower of one, attack value of one, defense of two, and health of three. Her response is going to be exhaust to cancel the one revealed effects of a treachery card just revealed by the encounter deck, then discard that card and replace it with the next card from the encounter deck. Actually, a very powerful response if you use it properly. Next, let's look at done here. Uh, threat value of eight, a willpower of one, attack of two, defense of one, four health. Uh, done here can attack enemies in the staging area when he attacks alone. When doing so, he gets plus one attack. And finally, we've got Eowyn, nine. Threat value. Uh, she's got four willpower, which is very powerful. One attack, one defense, three health. Uh, action, discard one card from your hand to give AOM plus one willpower until the end of the phase. This effect may be triggered by each player once each round.
All right, now let's look at the ally cards. You're gonna have a total of seven ally cards with the Spirit deck, which brings it in at the lowest total allies of any in the base set. You've got the Wandering Took here, a cost of two, one willpower, one attack, one defense, two health. Uh, he has an action of reduce your threat by three to give control of Wandering Took to another player. Raise that player's threat by three. And you get two of those in the base set. Then we've got Lorian Guide, uh, three value, or excuse me, three cost, one willpower, one attack, no defense, and two health. Uh, she has a response of after Lorian Guide commits to a quest, place one progress token on the active location. And you have three of those in the base set. And then you've got the Northern Tracker, cost four, uh, which makes him the most expensive ally, of course, and with this with the spirit set. Uh, one willpower, two attack, two defense, three health, so a pretty decent card just from that. Then he's got a response after Northern Tracker commits to a quest, place one progress token on each location in the staging area, which is very useful if you've got a bunch of locations out there just causing you problems. And you get two of those in the base set. Next, let's take a look at the attachments for spirit. Uh, you're going to get five attachments total, which is the lowest uh, for any of the cards in the Spirit deck, though not the lowest number of attachments for any particular deck. Uh, first, we got Power in the Earth. It's a one cost. It's a condition attached to a location. Attached location gets minus one threat, and you get two of those. Then we've got the Favor of the Lady. It's a condition attached to a hero. Attached hero gains plus one willpower. And then we've got, and excuse me, those last two, you get two of each of those. Um, and then this one, Unexpected Courage, cost two, it's condition attached, attached to a hero. The action is exhaust Unexpected Courage to ready attached hero. So it basically gives your hero two actions uh, per round. And you only get one of these. And now we'll look at the Spirit Deck specialty, which is going to be the events. It has 17 total event cards, which is by far the most of any of the base set decks. First, we've got Strength of Will here with a cost of zero. Uh, it's got a response after you travel to a location, exhaust a... What is A Spirit character, excuse me, sorry, I couldn't read that. Exhaust a spirit character to place two progress tokens on that location. You get two of those. Then we've got a test of will with a cost of one. Response, cancel the when revealed effects of a card that was just revealed from the encounter deck. And you have two of these. Then let's look at will of the west. Cost one, action, choose a player, shuffle that player's discard pile back into his deck. You're going to have two of those. And we've got hasty stroke, cost one, response, cancel a shadow effect just triggered during combat. Two of those. You can see a lot of these are very inexpensive events. And we've got dwarven tomb, action, return a spirit card from your discard pile to your hand. You only get one of these. That way you can't continuously return it to your hand. Next, we've got a light in the dark. Cost of two. Action. Choose an enemy engaged with a player. Return that enemy to the staging area. And you have two of those. Next, we've got the Galad Galadrims. Sorry for butchering that. Greeting. It's going to cost three, and it will reduce one player's threat by six, or each player's threat by two. And you get two copies of that card. Now we've got Fortune or Fate, cost of five, so obviously a very expensive event here. Its action is to choose a hero in any player's discard pile, put that hero into play under its owner's control. So basically you, your hero dies, and this brings him back. And you only get one of those. And then finally, we've got sand, or excuse me, stand and fight. It's going to cost X. Choose an ally with a printed cost of X in any player's discard pile. Put the ally into play under your control. The chosen ally can belong to any sphere of influence. And you're going to get three of those. 
Okay, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said before, the tactics and leadership video will be coming out shortly for the card close-up. And then we'll be getting into the rest of the series on Lord of the Rings, the card game. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Uh, look for me on Board Game Blender every other week. And find me on BGG. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.